welcome back everybody. It is time for some new rail fanning locations and shots. Welcome back to the Sunshine State Rails. And in this rail fanning trip, we will be rail fanning all across the state of Florida, the east, middle, and west coast. On account of some other business happening near Orlando, Florida, we happen to make trips out to the east and west coasts on our stay here, while the majority of our rail fanning would be in the center in between CSX's Taft Yard and downtown Orlando, Florida. Beginning our mid-morning on the CFRC, Central Florida Rail Corridor, we are greeted almost immediately with the sight of CSX train A777. This would be the last CSX train we would see until about 9 o'clock tonight, as the CFRC has a curfew between 5 a.m. and about 9 p.m. as the commuter line Sunrail runs the line all throughout that day commuting back and forth, so all CSX trains will run at night. This line is also quite interesting as neither Sunrail nor CSX own this line. The CFRC is under ownership of the Florida Department of Transportation with trackage rights being given to both Sunrail and CSX. And in the blink of an eye, there went Sunrail train P317 headed south. It's not visible in the video, but to the north, there is another northbound signal lit up. So there is another Sunrail on the way. Would you look at that? The northbound Sunrail train is the exact counterpart of the one we just saw. P316 coming north, rumbling out of their Sand Lake station stop, headed north to Sanford. We started driving for a little while before the radio crackled to life with Amtrak Train 91. The southbound Silver Star headed from New York City to Miami, Florida. Now a video of me catching this train anywhere besides Plant City, Florida. Here is Amtrak 91 coming south through Pine Castle. It was then that we hit the realization that we wouldn't be getting anything else besides Sunrail and Amtrak until the night hit. So we headed back to the hotel and got some rest before coming out for the rest of our late night adventure. Starting at about 8.50 p.m. in Taft Yard, or outside of Taft Yard I should say, don't worry I didn't go inside the yard, but there was a Sunrail train coming south even at this time of night, so we set up our cameras and waited for it to fly past us. It was then that we would finally get a little bit of CSX action. CSX train A798 was pulling out of his crew change right here at Taft and heading into the yard to switch some stuff around before heading south to switch God knows what cause I don't live here. Even after all this, there was still one more Sunrail train to get out of the way before the action would hit. It was finally that all the Orlando industry would roll in. CSX train A780 coming out of Sanford headed to Taft Yard with some fair amount of mixed freight headed south with two CSX Jeevos pulling. And before I leave you guys hanging, we moved up to the Orlando Sunrail and Amtrak station to shoot this, and since it was nighttime, nobody cared that we had tripods there. Not saying there was anybody there besides us at 11.30 at night, but just putting that out there before anybody gets the wrong idea. The next train to come this late night would be Florida Central Railroad train number Z915 a Florida Central Railroad local that comes out of their Modelo yard, comes onto the CFRC in downtown Orlando, and then runs to Taft Yard to interchange with CSX. The power on tonight's train would be Solo GP9RM number 7063. This locomotive actually used to work at Port Manatee, a location that I happen to rail fan fairly often on my channel.
915 had stopped right here in Orlando on account of a red signal just south of us. So we decided to move on and head back to the hotel, but we had gotten just south of Taft when our old friend A798 came into the picture again. He was coming south of Taft to switch some industry that was right here, so we pulled off to the side of the gas station and set up to catch our last train of the night. By the time this train had finished its work next to us, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, and that was our time to head back to the hotel and call tonight. However, prayers go out to the families and friends that were involved in some car accident not too far from this area, not too much over an hour after we were done rail fanning here. Turns out that at some intersection, a car was waiting at a red light when somebody full on rear ended them. That person fled the scene, leaving their car behind, while the other two had to be flown to the hospital at 3.30 in the morning. Our world is crazy, my friends. Always be aware of what you're doing in it. And that just goes to show, this can happen to anybody, so always be thankful for what and who you have because you never know when you might lose it. It was now Friday, October 4th, and we were out on another section of the Sunshine State Rails, the East Coast. My first time ever visiting the side of the state, or at least my first time ever rail fanning it. Not knowing much, we had gotten out here at about noon and had seen nothing till about 4 o'clock in the afternoon when FEC train 101 coming south from Jacksonville headed to Hialeah came past us in Titusville. FEC 101 is southbound intermodal traffic coming off of the Norfolk Southern at Jacksonville, coming out of FEC's Bowden Yard, heading down the East Coast, down to Hialeah Yard in Miami, Florida. Probably one of the most unique sights on this trip was what was tacked on to the very end. Two of FEC's business train cars, the Azella and St. Augustine, if I'm saying that right, which I really hope I am, were tacked on to the end of this long intermodal today. Moving back down to the Cocoa Beach area, we find FEC train 336 unloading its hopper cars. FEC 336 is reportedly a loaded rock train coming out of Miami, headed up to here at Cocoa to unload at the CMEX plant here. This train had arrived at about 8 o'clock this morning. It would not depart back from Miami until 10.30 tonight. That was not in the cards for us, so the last we saw on the East Coast for today was FEC train 336 moving around to unload. It was then that we would move on to our final day of rail fanning out here on the other side of the state. Coming back up to the Orlando area, there is a Conrad Yelvington here and they happen to be moving cars around today. The locomotive they were using isn't seen too often here. They are using some type of SW1200 locomotive and this may come as a surprise to some, but it looks as if this locomotive has been newly repainted and in a different Conrad Yelvington scheme. These guys had been going at it for about an hour in that yard there when Amtrak 91 snuck up on us again. You should know what Amtrak 91 is by now, right? Anyways, he stopped just up there in the Orlando Amtrak station to pick up his passengers before he'll head south for Miami. And I was hoping to get Amtrak 91 coming right next to the Conrad Yelvington job, and I did get that, in a way.
as smooth as I may make these rail fanning trips sound to you people, not everything goes as planned. Here's an example of one of those things. what else can you do but laugh at yourself every once in a while. Soon enough the switching is over and that would be the end of our rail fanning in Orlando for the rest of today but we still had quite the drive to make back home to the west coast and there were still some trains over there that we had to catch so we stopped in our first stop being Winston Yard at Lakeland and we immediately found CSX train 0799 a local train that today looked to be building the consist for Q604 which would leave later that night. The power on 799 were two of CSX's new ST70AHs, number 8908 and 8900. These two units were surprisingly clean as they rolled past us as they've been working in the Bone Valley for the last couple months. After tracking this next train for the entire day to figure out when and how we should get to Plant City in time to catch it, CSX train Q441, southbound mixed freight from Waycross, Georgia to Tampa, Florida, was making his way toward Plant City and we had gotten there about a half hour in advance. So we did nothing more but set our camera up and wait. <laughs> train that would catch up to us on our trip back to the west coast would be CSX train Q046. For now, daily intermodal traffic out of Tampa's Yusita Yard heading toward Jacksonville Intermodal Ramp. I'm sure you've heard this enough times from me. Passing a defect detector right here in Dover, Florida. And Q046's EOT at Dover would bring our across the state rail fanning trip to a close. I hope y'all enjoyed everything we caught as much as I did. I enjoyed it greatly, though I can't say I enjoyed the traffic too much. But besides that, it was a complete success. So in Dover, Florida, this is Coda Beaner, and I'll see you next time on the Sunshine State Rails.